Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Space Quest 1, Anne of Green Gables. We're back here on the Desert of Corona, having just crash landed, we've restored to a previous state from the point at which we left last episode, because I had suspected that we needed some kind of reflective material to get past a laser trap. Um, and I speculated that we'd be able to find it here at the crash site, given that we'd got a... Um, a cracked windscreen that we could exploit. So let's have a look around. Let's look at the pod to start with. I don't know if we did that last time. The pod seems to be semi-destroyed. Okay. Um, can I look at glass? Is there... You do not possess the designated item. There doesn't seem to be anything around. Any visual clue. Um, let's look at the ground. There's something down there. Look. That's probably not going to be called windscreen, is it? No, it doesn't understand windscreen. All right, can we go pod at least? Um, all right, well, let's look here. Um, I need to be more specific. Look room work before. That does not appear to be here to view. Can I get glass, though? No. Uh, get shard? Is there a shard? No, it doesn't understand shard. I'm going back to my old dark crystal ways, aren't I? Uh, can I look pod inside? Does that work? You're inside the escape pod. It appears that the more fragile devices were damaged severely by the impact of landing. The survival kit has broken loose from some place. Okay, this is good. This, uh, can we get the kit done? Excellent. So we did need to come back. Uh, it was important, but we probably can't get the thing I thought we might need. Oh, this is your survival kit. It contains a xenon army knife and a can of dehydrated water. Oh, okay. Can I open the kit? Open kit. Okay. Get knife. Ah. Use kit. Hmm. Okay. Maybe we just need that knowledge. Um, I think we should save though. In here. So, got survival kit. So, I don't know how that will help us, but it probably will. Go out. No, uh, exit. Can we exit? Okay. Alright, uh, we've, we've saved. So, while we're in the up here in the desert we might as well check out the things that we didn't have a look at last time such as going north now this is a featureless expanse of desert so i do have my reservations about whether we can continue yeah you have just become a vertical meal for the local welcoming committee all right we will um <laughs> we will restore as prompted we will exit the pod we'll head due east if i can maneuver around here due east and we'll just see if there's any other little bits and bobs that we didn't get before we'll try and hit the things that we did find before so i don't know if could we go north here and get to a different screen is that possible Oh yeah, it's this one that we... Is there a hole in the wall here? We did navigate this from above. Okay, I think we need to do some exploration. Look wall. Okay, uh, look hole. Look... I mean, it might just be a graphical thing, but... Oh! 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 Whatever's in that hole, just enjoyed lunch. On you. This should teach you to be cautious when encountering alien holes. Very nice. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you for the space quest. Too bad you failed miserably and doomed all your people to a horrible death. Aw. Good old space quest. Alright. Yes. Okay, so there are there are screens. Um, but not necessarily helpful ones. That's good to know. That's what we're here for. I did have a couple of um, minor themes in mind to talk about while we're poking around here today. And um, I'm probably dying quite a lot in the process. 
Um, one was using uh, quite opposite for for our experience at the moment, using a save and restore function as an actual game mechanic, which I think my impression is that generally it's frowned upon to expect that of a player and also frowned upon by some players um, as a means of cheating. Yes, let's get this plant. Well, let's see if we can go up here because we should be able to go under the under the bridge from the ground level, shouldn't we? Here we go. Yeah, so we know what to do there, I think. So we've got some plant. Can we go up here any further? Does that work? Yeah. So I mean, um, back to the save and restore thing. Oh, oh no, the spider thing. Oh, I think the spider thing is timed. Suddenly you see a large black metal sphere falling out the sky, a Sarian spider droid. Upon touching down on the planet's surface, it sprouts legs and begins its search for you. You recall from an article in Space Piston magazine that this droid is designed to seek out organic life forms and self-destruct when contact is made. Oh, I wonder if it follows you from screen to screen. Probably does. I think that's a function of AGI, from what I remember. Yes! Oh, this is good. And also frightening. It also means that we there probably isn't too much to do in the desert because we weren't given a lot of time before it landed. Oh, and it's it is slightly faster than Roger, isn't it? Uh oh, okay. I mean maybe the spider droid will get eaten by the thing? And we won't. That'd be wishful thinking, wouldn't it? Oh, let's see what happens. I'm curious. <laughs> and the spider droid just waited there. Brilliant. I think it lets you do a little bit of walking and then just changes the um the sprite to the you're being eaten sprite at some point. Beautiful. We're restoring. Um Yeah, so definitely there is a pan of uh expectation I guess convention really um, in early adventure games uh, especially these um, the the type sort of engaged in by Sierra um, where they're difficult because they're obtuse um, I think it's my general my general impression but that's sort of a mutually um, a mutually accepted and enjoyed uh, obtuseness which I um yeah, I kind of admire that um, that understanding, mutual understanding between the uh, the designers and the the player base. That that is the experience that everybody's here for. I think that's quite fun. But the point I would like to make is that I think Space Quest is quite an interesting case within this um, uh, this I guess example base of early adventure games. Should we have a little peek south? I suspect I know what it's going to be. Deserts where you get eaten? Yep. Okay, so it's just the, the mess area is, the, is all we get. That's, that's fine, that makes sense. Yeah, we get tremor. Duh, 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 duh. Was Tremors out before 1986? I don't know. Quite possibly. Okay, we're, we're trying again. I'm going to go and have a look. So I think there's like a cave-like opening um, on the far east of the Mesa. So we're going to have a look for that. And while Cat Sequences the Janitor is off doing that, um, I'm going to say that, yeah, so I think Space Quest, so far anyway, presents um, several small contained environments that you kind of need to navigate. Um, there's a, a dramatic drive for 
finding a route for survival for the the character that you're controlling um so there's there's quite a lot of uh dramatic urgency which is enhanced really by the uh the immediate presence of death and danger um so the um the failure state and the having to restore works there um but i think because of all the the time is because the the spider oh not that way uh this way oh yeah it must be it must be north of here um like the spider thing and the the auto destruct on the spaceship before was really interesting um in oh no it's okay it's, it's all right but this is an experiment oh okay oh there is a cave Ooh. is it gonna come in the cave it doesn't look like it oh yeah it's okay god that shocked me Okay, there's jump scares as well, folks. Um, uh, look, cave. You're in the slimiest of caves. The odour in here is less than desirable. Fabulous. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's anything in the cave. I don't know if I've got time to get anything from the cave, really, either, because I didn't mess around too much there. Well, we'll try again. Um, I would like to see if there's anything in this cave, because I don't recall. Uh, it may just be a distraction. Cheeky little game. Um, but the fact is, there's not... If you're following a successful sequence, there's not too much you need to do. So the... Um, the downside of repetition is is quite well minimised by the novelty of um, the different things that you can explore in the short time frame that you're given uh, in which to explore them. So where there is time pressure and part of the attraction is finding these um, unfortunate ways of meeting your own demise, because they're, they're very entertaining. I think... I think that works. I think that um, it successfully incorporates what could just be a, a convenience function of, of saving and restoring. So you'd have to play everything in one in one session. Now the is the spider can't fall from the sky if we're in the cave, right? So is that oh, there's a monster. Okay, look, monster, monster. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna talk to me. Why for you? Oh. <gasps> Aurat has transformed you into a new source of recreation. You, of course, don't survive this treatment. <laughs> it's tough to make friends around here. Aurat. Well, there you go. Right, so I guess if the spider is spawned, then Aurat doesn't. Uh, do we just avoid Aurat? Is that what we do? Maybe. Alright, I'll try what I think is the successful path to get us down to the um, the underground base, and then we'll, we'll go from there, I guess. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, so I think what I'm trying to boil this down into is that with save and restore built into a game which has uh, small, tightly focused scenarios with time pressure, you're more experiencing different elements of um, the same scenario um, and you're accruing knowledge as to what works and what doesn't. So it's... Um, Oh, no, I want to get plant, don't I? There we go. I don't know what we do with the plant, but we can do something, probably. So it's, um, if we go back to um, idea, yeah, I mean, people who talk about game design do talk about gameplay loops. And there, I mean, there's enforced repetition uh, through frequent, frequent uh, failure states in this game. I don't think the spider can come up here. I'm pretty sure. I hope it can't. Um, 
but there's also yeah there's the sort of elective loop of going out for a run uh knowing you won't oh, oh okay that's okay it's like not a Phew. no you won't quite make it but going in and gaining experience which to me is exactly like something like dark souls which is a very iterative uh style of gameplay where you uh make an attempt Um, learn from the experience and then try again. So basically what I'm saying is Space Quest 1 is the Dark Souls of adventure games. That is that is what I'm saying. Uh, and I'm saying that what could be and has been, and I'm not saying it shouldn't be, derided as um, a poor design choice, I think actually works to the benefit in the style of game that this is. I have another topic as well, which is about graphics. Um, but I'll, I'll save that for when we've... Uh, oh, maybe I won't. We might be waiting here quite a while. All right, so my point about graphics uh, is about, yeah, low-resolution graphics and stylization. Because I also think that uh, this resolution... Oh, are we going to... Hang on, I need to focus on this spider. No, it's getting out of direction. One day. Uh, yeah, a, a low resolution like this, um, it can be hard to get enough definition, so you might need a little bit more resolution than this. But the fact that it is low resolution um, and limited colour palette and everything else, it is enforcing stylization um, and means that the visual design does have to be pretty well focused. Is it going to go? Ah, oh, here we go, here we go. Yes! Master of the Rock again. Um, which I think aids design, especially in um, adventure games, because all visual adventure games typically devolve into looking for objects across the breadth of a scene. Um, and the fewer colours you've got, the fewer pixels you've got to work with, um, the more clear you have to be with what everything is, the less you can obfuscate with, with detail, um, because you are focusing on making a, a readable screen. Um, so I think that, I think that really works to the benefit of adventure games. I'm, I mean, as a um, as a cartoonist, I'm all for simplification and stylization. And <laughs> I love that little expression that you get at the top of the, the sheet there. And so, I mean, so the things like the uh, the rock that I spotted here last time, that I, I didn't know for certain would, would be here, but it just occurred to me that actually that little rock that's surrounded by black there doesn't look like it's necessarily part of the background because of the limited color palette and the um, limited ability to draw things. Uh, I think that, I think it strikes a good balance actually. Right, so we're gonna try this stuff again. I don't know, I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do about the lasers. That might be an issue. Put rock. Put rock. In Giza. That all right was a dodgy Giza. Flip. Is there a way through here? Or is that not? No, it doesn't look like it is. No, I think there's only one way through. I'm not overly fond of the um, <laughs> the navigation uh, in a segment like this. It's kind of like a, a mini maze. But you can't really judge the depth um, adequately when there's so many planes. Oh yeah, this is it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to save this as... 
Oh, okay. Now we're going to, need to re save over something again because we've filled up all our slots. So we'll go, go for this one uh, because that's the very first save of the game and I can just restart if I need to. Um, right, so I'm slightly worried that I've missed a glass or a mirror somewhere earlier in the game. Um, climb more. Nothing can be climbed here. Things are either too slimy or too steep. I do appreciate some of the clarity that this brings as well. They do anticipate that people would try and climb things. I mean, to be honest, there, that's, this bit here is, I think, within, within easy arm's reach. Um, because there's no, no scaling of the, the rod just right there. Um, what if I look at laser? The beams seem to form some sort of electronic barrier across the path. Use kit. Um, use knife. This knife wouldn't cut hot margarine. What if I, what else was in the kit? Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, they've been oh, dehydrated water. This is a cylinder of dehydrated water. At the top of the cylinder is a regulator and a short nozzle. On the side is a label. Oh, read label. Oh, the can label says. Pelvitron's dehydrated water, H2, all you add is air, makes 10 gallons. All you add is air. When would I need 10 gallons of water? Hmm. Oh, directions to you. Simply drink from nozzle. Metered amounts will be dispensed. Caution, do not attempt to open or rupture. Misuse could result in personal injury and or flash flooding. Uh, use can. Not cutting one of your options. Open can. You can't do that. Read the label. <laughs> oh, I thought the point of telling me not to do it was that I'm supposed to do it. This is your handy dandy Xenon army knife. Um, unscrew machine. So I feel like I've got either. Do something to direct the beams, redirect the beams, or something to damage the machine. Um, look, can I look at the room? You're in a large room in the cavern. There's a pathway above. Above, At the south end of the room are two odd looking units emitting beams of light. So can I look at unit? Does that work? Two metal units here which appear to be emitting beams of energy. Okay, so can I hit the unit? Does not compute. Can I break the unit? Can I scream? No. Can I shout? No. Can I cry? No. Oh, we're 47 of 202 though. That's good, isn't it? Alright, let's have a look at the inventory again. Um, a cartridge, a key card, a plant survival kit, a gadget, a dehydrated water, Xenon army knife. Um, use oh, use knife on beam. Say what? Um, use knife with beam. Use kit with beam. Uh, use can with beam. Drink. You place your lips to the nozzle and draw. A fluid, not a very reasonable facsimile of water, is released slowly. While tasting slightly terrible, it quenches your thirst, and at, le at least for the time being. Okay. Um, I wasn't aware that we were tracking thirst, but that that's good. Um, right, is there anything I can do with this pool? I feel like there's a reason that that this pool exists. Can I s swim through the pool? Is that a thing I can do? Where's, where have I gone? Oh, I'm there, how did I get there? All right, look, pool. You gaze intently at the purplish pool of liquid, the first real sign of moisture on the planet. The pool seems to have no bottom. The gentle dripping has a soothing effect on your frazzled nerves. 
Can I go? Ooh. That's not the way to get there. Okay. I think that might be a generic message. Can I... Oh! Uh, can I swim pool? Can I, can I enter pool? Your legs will take you where you want to go, in most cases anyway. Can I drink pool? Oh! You lean o over to drink from the tempting pool of liquid. As your lips touch the fluid, you feel a pain, which could be likened to kissing a lit rocket nozzle. Now you know what they mean when they say don't drink the water. <laughs> That's right, you have no head. That darn pool must be filled with acid. You obviously can't go on living that way. <laughs> oh. Um... I don't know if that helps. I don't, that's might just be a um, an environmental hazard, and not a solution to a problem. I, I can't. I can't just like walk around this unit, can I? They wouldn't do the uh, the trapdoor trick twice, would they? Now I do seem to recall the these laser beams being a bit tricky to work out first time around. Use key card on beams? Beam? No. Um Open the unit. Can I open the unit? Doesn't seem to be the correct action in this case. Hmm. Get unit. Get beam. Reflect beam. Don't understand reflect. Um, look beam. Ah, look beams. We can do the beams seem to be from some sort of electronic barrier. Seem to form some sort of electronic barrier across the path. Okay, um, um, use knife, cut unit, <laughs> it's knife wouldn't cut, yeah, so it knows I'm talking about the knife, that's good, hmm, well I don't, I don't think there's anything else around here, is there? Well, you know what, no, so having died of the acid that's dripping into the pool, I guess is actually a clue that acid above might be dangerous. Um, again, a good use of that iteration of experimenting, failing, and experimenting again, which is facilitated by the save function. Um, can I get acid? You have nothing that could successfully contain the liquid. Okay. Um, right, so I think there's only there's only two ways through this particular thing. Um, Alright, I think I'm going to end the episode here because I'm not quite sure what to do at this point. Um, I'm going to end it in grand style. <laughs> <laughs> You be snatched from existence by a tentacle beast lurking beneath the grate. You feel the painful sting of digestive fluids. Very, uh, yeah, very evocative. Thank you. Lovely. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining me for another episode of Let's Play Space Quest. I'm none the wiser at the moment, but we'll come back next time and we will try some other things. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.